Welcome to Friday on the Pagan Perspective. I'm Yaka, and this week we have a kind of fun topic. We are talking about BDSM and the Wiccan Read. So our viewer asks, what about BDSM and the Wiccan Read, as it is safe, sane, and consensual? So my short answer to this is actually just going to be that if it is in fact safe, sane, and consensual, then I don't see where there would be any sort of conflict with the read. But going a little bit more into depth, or the first thing we'll look at is what is BDSM? Now BDSM is actually a very large umbrella term for a very diverse and large community. And much like the pagan community or the GLBT community, it's something that is portrayed in the media and general perception as being a very specific thing which, for instance, in the pagan community um, we're often represented as being just a bunch of teenage goth chicks who like Buffy and Charmed. Now, many of us like Buffy Charmed, many of us are goth, many of us are chicks, girls, whatever, um, but that isn't the entirety of our whole community. In fact, we are a much larger and much more diverse community than that, although that aspect does exist within our community. Same thing with the GLBT community. It's often, per se um, per it's often perceived as flaming men in their 40s with rainbow speedos. Now that does exist within the, the gay community, but it is not the entirety of it. And that is very similar with BDSM. When one thinks of BDSM, they tend to think of the leather scene with somebody with something in their mouth and like weird leather things on and whips and paddles and whatnot. That is an element, but it isn't the entire element. So I guess to move back a little bit, um, it's BDSM stands, it's, there's three acronyms, even though there's only four letters. It's, uh, I had to write it down so that I'd get it right. Um, bondage, discipline. Dominance, Submission, and Sadomasochism. And as I was saying before, it can encompass a lot of different things. Personally, I have no attraction towards the leather scene. I don't consider myself a member of any of the subcultures, but there are elements that I think are very powerful and I find quite attractive and enjoyable. Um, but definitely not a member of the community as a whole. And I want to also clarify something, that w another thing that people often think of with BDSM is that it is pain. It has to do with pain. Now pain is an aspect of some, but what is really the larger issue that it's about is intense sensations. And pain is a very intense sensation, but there are other sensations involved as well. So going back to the read, which is, and if you harm none, do you will, so basically or in more modern English, um, do what you want as long as you don't harm anyone. How you define harm is very important. And also, how you, on what scale, on what level, and how do you decide that for yourself? Now, I am not a Wiccan, but in my practice, I do use the general guideline of the read. I think it's a great idea, but I have to really look at and evaluate different situations as how does that apply to the read and how do I interpret the read. Now I tend to not look at things like, well it really depends quite a bit because for instance I'm a gardener, I work in agriculture and every day I choose what of the hundreds of individuals who's going to die and who's going to survive and this is in terms of plants and insects, my body every second, and your body too, is killing foreign agents who happen to be individual bacteria. So we are constantly, if one considers killing to be harming, we are constantly killing to survive. We're choosing what lives and what dies, but it's all a system. So I, for, when I look at the read, I like to look at how does the whole system work. Am I harming the system? So it gets a little bit more tricky. There isn't cut and dry, well, 
you know, um, killing in the in the circumstance of of a plant or an animal or something like that or non-human animal, excuse me. Sometimes I consider it harming, and other times I won't because I cannot. If I consider killing to be harming, I cannot exist without causing harm. So it gets tricky. So I think that the the important thing is though one needs to decide for themselves how they're going to interpret what is harm and on what level. So for me, I look at BDSM and I say, well, as an umbrella term, as a general issue, do I think that it violates the read? Not really. I think that there is definitely potential for that, especially anything really that deals with the relationship between power, the relationship between individuals, sex, especially sex, because that's something that um, Western culture in general has this intense obsession with, and yet it's something that we have a very difficult time talking about, even with our own partners or our loved ones. Uh, even thinking about it with ourselves, it's very difficult for us culturally to be honest about that. So there's a lot of potential for abuse, intentional or unintentional, that can happen in that. And it's something I'd definitely caution folks, whether it is BDSM or it's just regular plain old sex, whatever you're doing, you know, be, be aware of that and be conscious of that. And as long as we're on that, co that topic of caution and whatnot, um, definitely go get checked out. It's really easy these days. It doesn't cost much. Go check out your local guys or girls. Check out your local Planned Parenthood or whoever you have and get tested. It's just like paying your taxes or changing your oil. Gotta do it. Don't make a big deal out of it. Doesn't have to be scary. Just something you gotta do. So I'm starting to take this video a little bit longer than I intended to. I hope that kind of addresses the the core issues of this question, which was really BDSM and the read. So um, I look forward to watching everybody's videos this week and definitely hearing what you have to say and think about this topic. All right, take care.